Good evening. This will be a quick informal video demonstrating a new double jointed ornithopter, the O2 Albatross. Join me for a quick flight over to the Sawyer Island airfield and we'll go over how to fly her and how she works. If desired, I may produce a more thorough, better scripted video discussing the construction of ornithopters in Stormworks, but for now I think this nerdy ramble will suffice. So, for what it's worth, the O2 Albatross does have a full interior in a manner of speaking. I am far from the best vehicle artist that this game has ever seen, uh, but uh, my handiwork will just have to do unless somebody else wants to retool it. You're perfectly welcome to if you'd like. Uh, we've got the usual basic functionality in, in the cabin. I don't really put a ton of attention to detail in these things unless I'm going in for a really long haul project like that submarine I did earlier. So, for the time being, most of our concentration here is really in the cockpit. Uh, like the um, O2 or the O1 Meadowhawk, I designed this to be a fairly straightforward cockpit. Most of this stuff is automated. You jump in, the, can the monitors turn on, etc., etc. I didn't really feel like spending a ton of time designing fake complication. I, I do like doing that stuff, but it takes absolutely forever. And since these are mostly technology demonstrators, I figured, eh, I'll just streamline it to the best extent that I can. So, in interest of taking off, we will begin simply by advancing the throttle. Unlike the Meadowhawk, it is not extraordinarily important that we do it slowly. Um, I'll show you a bit of the stroke here at a, at a low throttle setting. Uh, the double joint, uh, I originally just went for because I really wanted to try to make something that flew like a bird as opposed to just was technically an ornithopter, but it turns out there are some advantages. Uh, the biggest advantage is that it lets you extend the wingspan a little bit more without striking the ground, because instead of having the wing at its full extent, you fold it a little bit before it gets to the end, and you get the added advantage of being able to speed up the wingtip a tiny bit through the stroke of the wing, and the speed of the wingtip is really what produces pretty much all the thrust in vehicles like these. And it's why the wingspan is so important, because of course the distance from the center is multiplicative of the speed around the radius of the circle that the wing inscribes. So taking off is as simple as leaning on the throttle and pulling it off the ground. Once airborne, you will find that the Albatross has better climb performance than the Meadowhawk by some margin. I believe that's mostly a function of its wingspan. I haven't done exhaustive testing as to what causes this. The climb performance is quite a bit better. You can sustain maybe a 25-30 degree climb without too much difficulty. But being a single wing ornithopter, it is a little bit jerkier. I have done my damnedest to trim out all of the jerks with the little fluctuations you're seeing in the elevator, and it does a pretty good job if it's perhaps not as elegant a solution as the two as the twin countering wings that the Meadowhawk has. I considered trying to do a twin wing setup with this, but frankly I thought it would look kind of silly. Uh, so in cruise you may have noticed that our wing stroke changed a little bit, and that was because I'm actually using a dual mode setup with the wing here where after a certain range, the amplitude of the wing stroke increases considerably and the frequency decreases. Since what we're interested in is wingtip speed, we can get that wingtip speed either by moving the wing very quickly or by moving it over a long distance. We can, If we're moving it over a long distance, we can get away with moving it slower to obtain the same wing speed because the hinges spend less time speeding up, etc., etc. And they said that the, the control surface spends more time at that high speed is really the, the biggest reason. Also, I should probably turn on the generator. This will burn through its battery pretty quick. Uh, it's just a jet turbine generator in the back because they're absurdly efficient. Uh, it does not produce any thrust for the ornithopter. Uh, I left it off to begin with, basically just to prove that that was so. Um, unlike the Meadowhawk, this will fly a bit longer on lower battery, but it's better to have it on. So as we come in for a landing here, um, I'm going to back out the throttle a little bit. 
the thrust that we get from the wing strokes does diminish a little bit faster than it does in the Meadowhawk. But we can still, in general, put together a better slide, uh, glide slope than you usually can with aircraft in Stormworks, so it's a nice benefit of this propulsion method, as slow as it is. So we'll throw the landing gear down. Oh, and uh, oh, I didn't use them here. We do have altitude hold and a GPS uh, autopilot. You may note that the turning is not quite so steady as the Meadowhawk. Uh, again, that is a function of the fact that we only have one wing. So through the course of the stroke, the airspeed over the control surfaces and the direction of that airspeed changes considerably. So while you're deflecting one of the control surfaces, the kind of influence that it has depends very heavily on what part of the stroke it's in and it's not being counterbalanced. So this is a little bit tougher to fly. I'm going to need a little bit more throttle than that. And as we get close to the ground, you'll see it will snap into the shallower amplitude, higher frequency wing stroke, and we will actually gain a little bit of thrust, and it might want to try to float down the runway. So you have to be kind of ready to back out the throttle the rest of the way. And there it goes into the low amplitude, and touchdown. Uh, we do not have a steerable nose gear here because I couldn't get it to not collapse and I kind of wanted to avoid doing any XML editing on this. I think I am going to try some future ornithopters that do involve XML editing, particularly on the hinges, and see if I can get some really high frequency wings. But we'll see where that goes. Hey, jumping in real quick here at the end because I realized I forgot something kind of important. Uh, I know that uh, some people on the... Uh, original Steam page for the Meadowhawk. Didn't really understand what this gauge did, and since I've included it again, I figure I might as well explain it. Uh, you can see here we're in a relatively level cruise doing about 69 knots. Nice. And we have the shave steep blade angle on. Now, the this what this gauge does is it determines the angle of incidence of, or it determines the maximum and minimum angle of incidence of the quote-unquote feathers here in the wing. So angle of incidence is just the angle that the that the control surface is pitched up and or down relative to the fuselage, so I don't mean the stroke, but rather it's angling up and down in the wing as it moves. And uh, in a vehicle like this, in an ornithopter, that is roughly akin to the pitch of a propeller or the collective of a helicopter. And the, so the steeper that is, and you can see it's quite steep in this, in, this, uh, in, in, this, in this stroke, we will have, it'll take a larger bite of the air out at the slower air speeds, but it will produce more drag, because you can see it spends a lot of time angled way up, and if, it, if the ornithopter is trying to fly faster, that's getting in the way. And that's sort of what's limiting us here at this 69 uh, knots. So if we instead shallow this angle a little bit, this will be roughly equivalent to steepening the angle on a conventional prop. And you can see our airspeed climbs considerably. We actually generate a lot less thrust in this mode. But because the drag is reduced, our maximum speed is a lot higher. Uh, my battery is actually getting low, so at max it's somewhat higher than this, but you see this gives us about 80 knots instead of being 69. So if you're going for a fairly long cruise, it is actually worth doing that in this ornithopter. It's not as necessary in the Meadowhawk, but I thought that would be worth explaining. Thank you. Uh, for now, uh, if you're interested, the basic mechanism here is the wings operate on a pair of trig functions. One is running on, or the, the root is running on sine, and the out, the, uh, the second hinge is running on cosine, and it's just offset a little bit. So that they're just a tiny bit out of phase, and I basically just eyeballed that offset to get the stroke to look more or less correct and allow me to accelerate the wing tips for as long as I could. Unlike the Meadowhawk, where the control surfaces are also driven off of an opposite trig function, these are driven by the delta, uh, the, the delta rates for the hinges. I 
not really sure whether that's better. It is more gradual, but it has the added benefit in this case of if the wings are a little bit out of sync, it will automatically deal with the fact that the wings are a little bit out of sync. I'm just going to keep experimenting. We'll see what works better. Um, and I use the trig approach as opposed to like a ping pong approach because it's much, much easier to throttle. Um, I have seen a couple other ornithopters on uh, on the Stormworks workshop, but all of them were unthrottleable. So that was one of the things that I wanted to make sure that I had. And honestly, it's easier to set up the trig than it is to set up ping pongs. I, if you are looking to build an ornithopter, I recommend doing it that way. Anyway, I hope this hasn't been too terribly boring and has maybe been slightly informative. So uh, thank you and good evening.